everybody. Welcome to our commissioners, to our guests and presenters, and also to uh, the members of the public who have joined us here today. Um, just a couple of housekeeping as we are operating in a virtual space. Uh, we would ask for folks um, to please ensure that you have muted your, your device when you're not speaking so that we can reduce background noise. Um, also, we do recognize that um, Video and screens are optional, but if you are in um, a safe and comfortable space to share your screen, we would ask that you do that so that uh, we can see you. Um, and also for our uh, members of the public, um, you are able to um, kind of par participate and share thoughts through the chat. Also, we will take some uh, time if there's any other additional comment from members of the public during the during the meeting, but members of the public are encouraged to utilize the chat to share any thoughts or or um, ideas as we go through the meeting. Also, for our commissioners, um, since we do have a large group in this space, if you um, would like, we would ask that folks use the chat and the raised hand function so that uh, our chair and the facilitators can recognize you if you would like to speak. Also, we do have a number of staff who are here with us who will uh, monitor the chat. Um, some responses may be answered in the chat in real time. We may uplift some things um, to the facilitators or the chair and respond um, in real time. But if there are any additional questions that might not have been addressed during the meeting, we'll ensure that we reach out either to those individuals specifically or uh, those questions are noted in the meeting minutes, which will be shared. Um, so I think those are all of our housekeeping items for the day, and I'm going to turn it back over to Jessica. Great. Thanks so much. Um, for those of you that might not know me, my name is Jessica Wheeler, and I'm the Deputy Director of our Children and Youth Division at the Governor's Office of Crime Prevention, Youth and Victim Services. I serve as chair of this commission and our office provides the staff support for the commission. Um, so before we, um, we, we dive in, I just wanted to give a quick overview of today's agenda, um, which hopefully you um, already had a, a quick chance to take a look at when we sent it out. Um, but um, the, um, the bulk of the agenda today will be focused on the commission visioning retreat coming up. Um, uh, but before that, Christy Fogel um, will give a brief update on the legislative report that was submitted. Um, and we will have to just skip over approval of the minutes today. Um, the, the version that you all received was, um, was incomplete. So we will um, be sure to get the correct version out to everyone and give ample time for you to review those. And then we will come back um, at the next commission meeting in August and approve um, those minutes along with today's minutes. Um, and then we will have some time to discuss next steps, answer any questions, and then close us out for the day. Um, so, um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kelly Gorman to do roll call and introductions. Thanks, Jess. Um, I believe we have Ever, I'm monitoring the um, who's here, the attendance, and I don't see anyone on the phone right now. So I'm just going to keep an eye on this uh, throughout the meeting. So don't worry, you if you are here, you will be marked as present. Um, unless anyone is a new designee for someone, I have you, but um, I believe I have all of the names of the designees. So unless this is your first meeting, um, no need to ping me in the chat, but otherwise we are good to go. Awesome. Thanks so much, Kelly. And Kelly, um, can you confirm that we have a quorum? We don't have any voting items, but just for the, the record. Let me see. We have... I don't want to put you on the spot. If you need to come back to me with that, that's fine. I think we're going to need like three more. Okay, good to know in case we, yeah. we, we needed that eventually. Okay. Um, and with that, I think next on the list is Christine to give us an update on the legislative report. Um, hi, everybody. Christine Fogel. I, it's real simple. The legislative report that you guys submitted changes on and voted to approve was submitted to the legislator and I mean to the governor and the general assembly before June 30th. Um, there was a glitch in the PDF document. And so towards the very, very end in the attachments, one of the attachments, the images didn't 
select correctly. So it's going to be resubmitted, but the document is as it was submitted to you. Once that glitch has been corrected, it'll be uploaded to the website, but you guys were provided with a copy that was attached to the reminder email for this. And that is basically it. Any questions about the legislative report? Thank you guys for all your support with that. Thanks for everyone's contributions to that um, and reviewing and providing feedback. It was, um, I think it was a really collaborative process and we really appreciated that. Um, and we're really happy to, that we, we were able to get it submitted on time, which was, um, which was wonderful. Um, so with that, actually, Christy, we're gonna keep rolling with you to give us an update on the retreat. Uh, so just again, oh, okay, I muted. Um, again, these are the numbers that we have as of today. Um, so we have uh, 20 commissioners total, 17 in person of the work group chairs. We have six who are attending in person and one virtually, and the rest are community members. Total, we have 38 who have registered in person and 30 virtually as of this moment, or at least right before the meeting. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping stuff. Um, everybody at this point should have received a confirmation email. If you registered virtually, yours would be a virtual confirmation and in person would be in person. The only difference being some of the logistical details for the in person attendance. Um, everyone also should have invite should have received a separate invite for the pre event survey. Again, those pre event surveys need to be completed by close of business today so that, that information can be provided to the facilitators by tomorrow so they have that information in order to utilize it to plan the visioning retreat on Thursday of next, a week from today. Um, everyone also should have gotten a Google Meet invite uh, for the day of the event, whether you're attending in person or virtually, that Google Meet invite will be necessary because we will be having certain activities that will be done together with the Google Meet invite, whether you're in person or attending um, in, in person or virtually. Um, and again, for those that are attending in person, please remember that we are not able to provide refreshments. So we'll need you to bring lunch, beverages, whatever it is that you want for the day. Uh, we need you to bring ID to check in at the front desk. And again, if you have, you can either bring a computer or a phone, some way with which to participate in those online activities. If you do not, if you have registered or you believe you have registered and you have not received a confirmation, please let me know, send me an email or put it in the chat and I will make sure that you do receive that um, immediately. Um, if you planned on registering and have not registered, please do so as quickly as possible so that I can make sure to get that information to you. Um, again, we also wanna make sure that everyone has an opportunity to complete the pre-event survey because that information will, um, provide information to the facilitators. Back to you, Jessica. All right, thanks so much, Christy. Um, so next, um, I have the privilege of introducing you all to the, the main event to, for today's meeting, um, our um, friends at the Anne Arundel County Conflict Resolution Center who have so graciously volunteered their time um, to facilitate the upcoming visioning retreat um, and so I just wanted to thank them for all of the time and the effort that they have put into this. Um, and I, um, without further ado, I will turn it over to Georgia who can um, introduce herself and her team. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Christine. Um, it's, I wanna say on behalf of the board of directors for the Anne Arundel Conflict Resolution Center, our staff and our many, many volunteers that, um, it's a real honor um, and a privilege to be part of what we believe to be a major shift in how public service um, is being uh, viewed and looked at, the lens that you're taking, the amount of time and the effort. Um, we're just really, really honored to be a part of this, of this activity. And we want you to know that we're your partners in this. Um, we're overwhelmed. Um, with excitement. And please forgive me if I start talking fast, because sometimes I do, especially when I get excited. Um, it's just the potential that we all have here. And so thank you for that. Um, I have with me today, uh, Toby Guerin, 
who has been with the center for a very long time. Toby is the managing director for the uh, for CDRM, uh, the Center for Dispute Resolution at the University of Maryland, Cary Law School. I also have Carlisa Finney with me. Carlisa currently serves on our board of directors and has a ton of experience um, in equity. Um, she's a former of, uh, executive director for the Office of Equity and Student Acceleration with Anne Arundel County Public Schools. And she served on, I don't know how many different boards and is a master uh, mediator herself, as well as Toby. I have our staff member, Valerie Lilly on the line with us, who's also an attorney and a mediator at the center. She's our staff person that's assigned to this project. Dr. Randy Rao, who could not be with us today for this session, um, who is a facilitator and also a professor at Morgan um, State University. We're just excited and I feel like we brought an A-team um, to work with you guys. Um, we have been working, I would say diligently for the last couple of weeks with Christine and with Aubrey and uh, our your intern. So it's been a real, um, it's been a real joy. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Toby has our slides. Would you put those up for us? Okay. So we're gonna take the next, I'd say hour or so to kind of get into um, what we hope will be the uh, precursor to the way the session will run on the 28th. Um, next slide. So my job today is to talk to you really about, um, next slide, about the, the role of the facilitators. And let me begin by saying that we are attempting to model today behavior um, and communication skills that we're asking you to look carefully at and um, to incorporate into the way in which we move forward, not just with the retreat, really, but kind of all of the work, whether it's in your work group, whether it's at the retreat, we think that these, these are the types of skills that can be helpful in moving any agenda forward. Sometimes you feel stuck. Sometimes it feels like we're not making progress. Um, but we hope that by modeling this behavior, as facilitators, we're practicing what we preach and we're using what we teach. We say that all the time. So first and foremost is the role of the facilitators today is to be non-judgmental, confidential neutrals. That's really important. The next thing we're going to talk about is listening inclusively. Now, listening is, I think, one of the most underrated skills, but it's probably one of the most valuable skills. And so as facilitators, we're taught to listen and look for feelings and values. And we'll give you an example of that shortly, but looking and listening for feelings and values. We also wanna highlight areas of agreement and disagreement, right? Not dislike, not distrust, but areas where we find agreement and work on those and expound those. And then also look at the feelings and values and where we disagree and how we can move beyond that disagreement. Finally, we're going to also look at some nonverbal. We're gonna establish an agenda and participation guidelines for the retreat and how we are working together. And you'll have opportunities for open discussion, but let's focus also not just on the verbal, the nonverbal. Part of that is completing the pre-survey, right? If you've not done that, please take the opportunity to complete the pre-survey. Um, my staff has issued an email to everyone who is RSVP thus far. We will be calling you over the next couple of days, even up into the 27th, to try to get and have one-on-one -on -one confidential conversations with you. So you may or may not feel comfortable saying and speaking in this group today or talking or even completing a survey. The conversation that you have with my staff, though, it's really important when we say that it is neutral, that it is confidential, anything that you say in those meetings, the only time that information comes out of those meetings is if you mention it in the larger group or to someone else. That's how serious we are about rule 17 of confidentiality. The only things that are not confidential, and we'll talk about this, are threats of bodily vi of violence, um, uh, those things that are always reportable, abuse to a child or abuse to an elderly person. And so the final nonverbal opportunity we'll have is activities around um, polling, and we'll get an opportunity to do that today. Next slide. So let's get into um, 
the being neutral and confidential. Toby, can you give us the next slide? Okay, great. So listening. When we talk about listening, we talk specifically about um, hearing someone. Everyone desires to be heard, not just want, 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 not just the actual wavelengths that are going across, but listening to be heard. And so we oftentimes think of listening just with our ears. This is really fundamental. We want to listen with our eyes for the nonverbal as well as our ears to what people are saying. And we're looking deeply as participants, all of us, for what people are saying and what they're not saying. So for example, um, if a person says, we're not getting anywhere, and that's oftentimes what happens is the nonverbal is like, you, you see the frustration, what they're feeling is annoyed, they may be feeling stuck, they may be feeling ignored, and there's a whole lot of other words that we could use. They may also be feeling judged in that space. What they're feeling, what their value though is, is in that they're saying, I wanna see progress. I value progress. I value solutions. Don't just tell me about the problems. And I want us to move forward. Like what is next? What's gonna get, what's gonna get us there? So when we talk about listening, it's not just what the person is saying verbally, but it's also what they're not saying. So we're kind of trying to read into that and read the feelings with the words that they're using. Again, we're not getting anywhere. So ask yourself, what word can I use or two words to kind of summarize that statement, okay? And in that, what are those feelings and what are the values? So there's more. What can I do to make a difference? Well, we just went over listening with our, with our ears and our eyes as feelings. One thing, you want to be present. We're going to talk specifically about what it means to be present. You need to be neutral and we need to practice being reflective. So let's get into the first one about being present. Next slide. Being present rem means removing all distractions. You've got your cell phone up, turn it upside down if you can, <laughs> really. Um, if you've got 50 other things going on, what you're gonna be doing on the 28th, the legislative report, what's happening in the next meeting, let's do our best to empty our minds of all those things. The only priority is being present and right now. So empty your mind of all your personal issues, the dog in the background, the email going off, all of that. No interruptions, no excuses. The next slide, please. After we've decided that we're going to be present and there are no distractions, when we talk about neutrality, what does that mean? It's fundamental. It doesn't mean empathizing and it doesn't mean sympathizing. Being neutral means being non judgmental, meaning no judgment. If a person says something that you would normally say, that is outrageous, that is ridiculous. That's being judgmental, right? It's, it really is. You're placing a judgment on what they're saying. Instead, we'd like to say, what are they feeling in that, right? Um, are they feeling frustrated? Are they feeling irritated? That's not a judgment. That is really delving into what you believe that feeling is. And the participants, they're not right or wrong. Everyone has a right to the way in which they're thinking, but their experience oftentimes defines what it is they're feeling and thinking not our experience. And that again is sympathizing and empathizing. So we want to be neutral and in being neutral, we're really just listening to what it is that they're saying. Next slide. So finally in doing all of that and being present and being neutral, we can finally dig into being reflective. That last part that I was just talking about. Watch, wait, and listen. Being present means not being ready to immediately respond to what a person is saying. As facilitators, as participants, we can only really listen to what a person is saying when we allow them to complete their thoughts. Then listen to that, re-engage that in our mind and say, oh, let me reclaim that. Okay, let me reframe that in a situation and hear what they're saying. That allows us to de-escalate. An immediate response oftentimes is a defensive response, right? You're feeling hurt, you're feeling put upon, you're feeling attacked. And oftentimes that's not the situation. And it might be the situation that a person is attacking you, but really in that attack, what are they trying to get at? What are they really trying to say? What are they feeling at that moment? And so if they're feeling frustrated, if they're feeling judged and they're looking for forward movement, how do we get to that, right? And so being reflective doesn't mean 
agreeing. Don't you agree when I say that this really pisses me off, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't mean summarizing back to them what they just said to you. It means being present and looking for meaning what it is that they're saying or not saying. So don't respond immediately. Respond after they've spoken with a phrase, and we'll kind of get into one here shortly. Respond um, in a way that is thoughtful and neutral. Next slide. We're gonna get into a gathering here. Um, Toby's gonna take over, but before we leave, I just wanna make sure that we're gonna model some of this as we're going along. I'm not asking that anyone be an expert at it. We're gonna have um, situations, especially at the retreat, where people are going to immediately respond to something and say something that might feel hurtful. It might feel um, personal. It might feel like an attack. This is a perfect opportunity to try and use reflective listening and reflective responses to be inclusive in that again the key words are feelings and values and then how to rephrase that in such a way that we can get the types of responses that we want so i appreciate you all for listening i know this is rather fast again we don't expect you to pick up on it right away but we're going to do our absolute best to model this type of behavior and my hope is is that we'll be invited to participate with you in your work groups so that we can, again, this is a learned behavior like everything else, that we can start to use this to make the meetings um, much more productive. Um, not that they haven't been, but make them much more productive. But also these are skills that you can use in your everyday um, work with coworkers within your own agencies and organizations. So thank you for the opportunity to share this very small part about the role of facilitators, and I'll turn the gather gathering over to Toby Guerin. Toby. Thank you, Georgia. Um, and as Georgia mentioned, I'm going to lead in just this brief gathering. We don't always um, do this, and we are always mindful of the time that it takes. But as this is our first uh, engagement with this group, we wanted to provide um, this opportunity as just a brief way for us to get to know you and for you all to get to know each other. So um, I'm going to introduce this and then I'm going to stop uh, presenting. So what, uh, what we'd like to do is to say your name, just your name. Um, your role here today, whether you're a commission member, a commission member designee, a work group member, or um, a, a stakeholder or some other um, person. We don't need your formal position or title, but just your role as it relates to this particular meeting today. And then in two to three words or less, what is one thing you or your organization brings to this work? And I want to emphasize two to three words, not a sentence. Um, and so in a moment, I'm going to give you uh, some time to think ahead about what that might be. Um, Norm, if we were in person, this is kind of a process that sometimes we do um, in a circle or around the room. So I want to give you all that opportunity to um, engage or not engage in this gathering as you would like. So you can provide your two to three words. You can say pass or come back. Um, I also want to emphasize that it is absolutely fine if your two to three words is the same as someone else's. I know sometimes in a, in a circle, we're always trying to come up with something new, um, but whatever two to three words work for you is fine. So let me um, demonstrate. Um, uh, my name is Toby Guerin. I am a facilitator and I bring process and neutrality. So that's what we're looking for. I'm going to call on people uh, to so because it's hard to kind of know the, the order. And please note that uh, if you look at the participant list, it is in alphabetical order by first name. Uh, and so that's kind of how we're going to go through today. So if you click on participants, you can get a sense of the order uh, for the gathering, right? So again, two to three words on what you or your organization bring to this work, okay? 
All right, so um, I'm gonna do my best to call and then you can just take yourself off mute. We'll see how this goes. Um, apologies, I don't know everybody's formal title, so I'm just gonna be using first names and also apologies if there's any mispronunciation um, with regard to that, okay? So I'm gonna pause for like 30 seconds to give people a chance to think about their response two to three words, okay? All right, so let's start with Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda Klein and I work for the Center for Chronic Disease Prevention and Control with the Maryland Department of Health. Um, and so I am actually here on behalf of our center. Our director couldn't be here today. Um, and I don't know what my three words are. <laughs> I'm gonna pass. Okay, Amanda, are you a commission member in oh. that? I actually don't know what her capacity is. I think she is a commission member, um, but I am not. Okay. Uh, Amy. All right. Aubrey. Hi everyone, my name is Aubrey Gerhardt. I'm at the Governor's Office of Crime Prevention, Youth and Victim Services, and I am here for support and organization. Great, Ulysses. Hi, my name is Ulysses Archie. I'm from the Baltimore Gift Economy, a community um, person here. Uh, and my two words is uh, hopeful and curious. Uh, Carlisa. Carlisa is on mute. Thank you. I have notes all over to myself to say unmute. I'm Carlisa Finney. I'm also a facilitator and I also bring process and neutrality. All right, Carrie. Hello. Sorry, you're catching me on the walk. I'm Carrie Freshour. <laughs> I am a chair of the ACE Aware Committee. My three words would be lived experience and clinical clinician. Okay. Cherry. I'm Cherry Price. I'm a work group member. Um, I'm an educator in Prince George's County Public Schools. And um my words are perspectives of marginalized children and families. Okay, great. Thank you. Chris, Christina. Good, up, good morning, everyone. Christina Drusha Williams. I provide staff support to the commission. And my three words are uh, staff, support, and guidance. Okay, Christine. Hi, Christine Fogel. Uh, I provide staff support, and my words would be um, passion and commitment. Christopher. Good morning, everyone. Chris Mealy, Governor's Office of Crime Prevention, Youth and Victim Services. The words would be um, staff support and adaptability. Uh, Claudia. Hi, I'm Claudia Remington. I am a work group member and I, my words would be subject matter expertise. Delisa. Good morning, everybody. I'm Delisa Worthy. I'm from the Maryland Department of Health, Behavioral Health Administration. Um, I'm a commission member, and uh, my words would be um, 
expertise, and I bring passion. Great. Eileen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm so sorry. Yeah, this is Christine. I'm on the phone, and I think you might have jumped over me. I didn't recognize sure. my phone number. But I'm in, I just want to be in the C group. <laughs> sure, please um, go is, ahead. Yeah, this is, okay, this is Christina Bethel. I'm a commissioner, and I have evident possibilities and lived experience. Okay. Thank you for jumping in there. I was going to get you at the end. I should have mentioned that. Yes. Oh. Okay. All right. Um, and now Eileen, thank you for your patience. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm Eileen King. I am the founder of ED of Child Justice Incorporated. Um, we are stakeholders in this process. And the words I would throw out are free legal services for trauma survivors. Frederick. Good morning, Fred Streeter, uh, commissioner, and my three words are intergener intergenerational perspective, seniors. Okay, Georgia. Thank you, uh, Georgia Nunsharad, facilitator, um, conflict management, public administration, uh, subject matter expert, and neutrality. Inga. Uh, good morning, Inga James, representing the Maryland Network Against Domestic Violence. Um, and three words are statewide collaborative experience. James. Good morning, Jim Hawk. I am here as the designee for Colonel Jones, the superintendent of the state police. And thinking about our three words, I would say public contact daily. Janice. Hi, I'm Janice Goldwater, um, representing Adoptions Together. I, I in the uh, training work group co-chair, and um, my three words are subject matter expert and lived experience. Jennifer. Good morning. I'm Jen Crable I'm with the Governor's Office of Crime Prevention, Youth and Victim Services. And our words would be um, encouragement, uh, support, and champions. Jessica. Hi, Jessica Wheeler, Commission Member. Um, our organization brings staff administrative support, legislative researching support, and a structure and forum to convene. Joyce. Joyce, you're off mute, but I can't hear you. Right? If you can maybe put yours in the chat, we'll see if we can come back to you. Uh, Kelly. Hi, Kelly Gorman, Commission staff. And my two words are organization and preparation. Uh, Kirsten. Good morning. My name is Kirsten Ramagrath. I'm with the Department of Disabilities. I'm the Director of Health and Behavioral Health Policy. I am the department's designee for this commission. I would say our words are um, disability, expertise, accessibility, and inclusivity. Lisa. Good morning. I'm Lisa Dominguez. I'm a work group member, um, and my three words are curiosity, openness, and compassion. Malcolm. Good morning. I'm Senator Augustine. Um, my two words are legislator and advocate. Um, Matilla or Matila. Thank you, Matila, commission member. My three words are preventing child maltreatment. Miles. I'm Miles Lawrence with the Department of Juvenile Services. I'm a commission designee. Uh, my three words would be evidence-based and curiosity. Um, and I have uh, Minnery's dream uh, something. So if, if who that was, could, could ch chime in. 
Yes, good morning. And I'm actually coming off mute, mute under Paul too. This is Don okay. Stella. I'm having um, sound issues on my laptop. So in order for um, the quorum and all of that, I know they're capturing Maneri's Dream Alliance. So I am a commission member. I represent the organization Maneri's Dream Alliance, also a council member for the town of Denton. And my words are advocacy and dedication. All right, uh, Pilar. Hi, uh, my name is Pilar Olivo. I am in Frederick County. I'm a hopefully soon to be work group member and um, a, but an observer of, for uh, since the beginning of the commission. Um, I bring intentionality, uh, coalition building and uh, big ideas. I have special, yep. Yeah. Hi, my name is Meg Maldana. I'm attending as an invested public member um, with a professional background in the education sector. My words are protection and care for children. Right. Uh, Stephanie Erdes. Um, good morning. My name is Stephanie Erdes. I'm from the Maryland Coalition Against Sexual Assault. I'm our stakeholder. And I'm going to repeat the words of Inga representing the network that we bring statewide perspective. Hi, Stephanie, the other Stephanie. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Stephanie Freeman uh, with the St. Mary's County Health Department Behavioral Health Division. Um, my words would be dedication and evidence based. Uh, Sylvia. Good morning. Sylvia Lawson, commission, uh, commission. Um, I'm on the commission. My three words would be understanding, insight and knowledge. Okay. Uh, Valerie. Good morning, everybody. My name is Valerie Lilly. I'm a staff member at the Anne Arundel Conflict Resolution Center. Um, and my words are listening, reflecting, and learning. Vanessa. Hi, everyone. I am a work group member, and my words would be communication strategy and big picture thinking. Uh, Wendy. Hi there, Wendy Lane. I am a commissioner from the State Council on Child Abuse and Neglect, and I bring child health knowledge and experience. Okay. Uh, Zeke. Okay, and um, I know that um, I think it was Joyce was having trouble participating orally, and so I want to read what was put in the chat. We have Joyce Harrison, child uh, psychiatrist at Kennedy slash Hopkins, commission member, and bring compassionate clinical experience. So um, thank you all for engaging in that exercise. I don't know about you, but I heard just a huge breadth of um, commitment, passion, experience, lived lived experience, um, subject matter expertise, um, just um, and also just very kind of specific, nuanced expertise as related to this particular um, topic. Um, I saw that Georgia, you had indicated that you had raised your hand, so I want to pause and um, give you a moment. Yes. Thank you, Toby. I also wanted to acknowledge we uh, Amy uh, Merrick um, that she chimed in um, that she said that she was sorry she accidentally hung up, um, but in her she's a member of the working group and her words were energy and kindness, and something that resonated I think over and over again. A few to add to what you uh, mentioned over and over again. We heard the word curious, we heard the word passionate. We heard expertise, um, we heard advocate, um, we heard lived experience multiple times. So all of those were just um, shared thoughts and words that popped up multiple times. Thank you, Georgia. And I mean, I think from, from a uh, facilitator's perspective and in hearing from you all, I can really understand why the combination of all of these people really is necessary to bring forth 
the real kind of mission and goals of the of the commission. And so we wanted to just spend a time for to connect with you all and really those things that you're bringing um, to this conversation. As we transition into, I'm going to turn it over to Carlisa in a moment, really just reconnecting with kind of that overall um, uh, purpose of the commission. And then we'll close out today with an opportunity to hear from you all about your priorities uh, for the meeting on July 28th. So I wanna kind of go over that. What we'd like to do is just kind of reground the group in kind of some of the, the legislation and what you all have accomplished thus far, and then transition to the, um, to the priorities for the meeting on July 28th, okay? Great, so just give me a moment to go back to sharing my screen. I'm on a couple different screens and Sometimes moving my mouse can can um, get a little glitchy. So hold on one moment. While Toby is pulling up the screen, I'll just set the stage a little bit that uh, Georgia gave you a uh, synopsis of the kind of work we've been doing. And with those of you who are commissioners, staff, stakeholders to put this plan together. And so some of what you're seeing today is the result of the information and the ideas that have come to us from various ones of you. And uh, we wanted to, as Toby said, ground everybody in a collective and common understanding, knowledge of terms, um, also of the a summary or at least some highlights of the tasks that you have to perform. And I want to join Toby and uh, Georgia in expressing my excitement about this commission and the work that you are doing, have already started, are committed to, in the words that I've heard also today, committed to continuing and to completing and to say that this is a monumental task and unprecedented in Maryland, and I'm very excited to be a part of watching how this unfolds. So to start with, just sharing that you know that you are an independent commission functioning in the Department of Human Services, and the 29 members that our governor appointed had the opportunity to determine your own operating procedures, including some of what you've already done in uh, setting up your work groups and consulting with experts who are not members of the commission. The legislation defines your mission and your main purpose. You all may be familiar with this, but this is the daunting excitement opportunity that you have to develop and coordinate a statewide initiative to prioritize the trauma responsiveness, responsive and trauma-informed delivery of state services that affect our children, our youth, our families, and older adults. This is a list from the actual legislation that has been um, pulled together to just remind you of the number and the depth and the breadth of your task and roles to assist in the statewide strategy for shifting the whole culture into a trauma responsive state to establish metrics with the health department and evaluate that progress to coordinate and develop training with the Maryland Department of Health to assist in identifying programs that has already been uh, begun with the commission that I'll share with you and my talk about your accomplishments that service our youth and our families and older adults. The role for you to disseminate information about best practices so that other agencies and organizations can join you in this effort of the statewide effort for preventing uh, trauma on children and youth. And to study the best practices for um, helping our children, helping to prevent um, uh, childhood um, trauma 
in the future and for our children coming up. And of course, multiple opportunities to report and advise the governor and the General Assembly of your work, your accomplishments, and how you see this mission being accomplished. So part of your work for the retreat is to come together with the understanding about how you operate and what your roles are, how you each contribute, how your organizations bring back information to develop a vision for the state. So all of this will help you to collectively decide what will it look like for Maryland to become a trauma responsive and trauma informed state. So with that vision, I think that you should congratulate yourself on the accomplishments so far that your uh, commission has been a, um, able to really work on in a few short months. And that includes the governor's signed executive order directing the state agencies to look at their own policies and programs that can reduce those adverse childhood experiences, share data. So he's asking the agencies to work together on this commission, with this commission, and in support of this commission. The executive order declared Maryland, uh, at, uh, I'm sorry, uh, declared May 6th as Maryland's annual ACE or Adverse Childhood Experiences Awareness Day and directed all the units to coordinate to reduce these trauma experiences across the state. The governor concurrently announced $25 million of CARES money to fund the Project Bounce program, a, pro a Project Bounce Back program to help our Maryland youth recover from the COVID pandemic. And you've already begun inviting speakers from national and local organizations with successful trauma-informed programs and strategies so that you can continue to gather information and to get, gather information about more successful programs. You've created work groups, and those work groups have already met, reported to the commission, and continued their work. And you all have divide, devised a, uh, and planned a full day retreat, which we will all be happy to participate next week on July the 28th, to continue to look at your mission and your overall direction. And finally, you have created a cross-section ACE data work group, and that has already produced a dashboard and some information that's going to help you to identify, further identify, uh, programs, evidence-based programs, and to guide and direct your work. This has not been easy already, and we certainly in uh, the Conflict Resolution Center applaud the work that you've done and look forward to seeing the continued work and passion that you all bring to this, to this project for our children, our families, and our elders in the community. So next, I would like to um, bring Georgia back. She's going to remind us about our next steps, including our survey. And she's going to probably give you a little bit more information about the intake conversations that we're asking everyone to participate. Right. Um, thank you, Carlisa. And thank you for um, you know rolling that part of the um, presentation. Now, one of the things I'd like to do before I turn things back over to Toby to do the expectations, we like to um, oftentimes, you know, when we don't have a lot of interaction at this point, try to give analogies that might seem to bring some clarity to what it is that we're attempting to say is number one, what you're attempting to do is so huge. It's big. It's We know it's a heavy lift. but in public administration and providing um, service, I, I like to take that historical view, historical perspective, that this is not the first time something 
momentous has been attempted. If we look back over history, women didn't have the right to vote in 1919, right? And at the time, um, it probably seemed to women going through the suffrage movement that it was going to be impossible. So it really is about perspective, right? I think it's important that as the commission is going through this process, that we work from an asset-based perspective and not from a deficit perspective. And that's really what you all have done thus far. But also, I think it's important to look back on major shifts in policy and how that's been done and learn from that and see the possibilities, vision ourselves in that place where every agency, every organization has fully implemented trauma-informed care embedded in everything that it is they do. So I'm gonna encourage us all to put that vision of where we want to be as we're working in our work groups, as we're working as a commission, put that in the forefront of our minds because that's gonna be the thing that propels us into that vision, um, that lived experience that many of you have already mentioned, um, the advocacy, the dedication, the passion, those things you've mentioned. So without um, expanding any further on that, I'd like to turn the facilitation over to Toby so that she can now step into the expectations of the retreat and walk us through kind of um, brainstorming um, activity. Toby? Thank you, Georgia. Um, so, you know, part of our goal and role as facilitators is to, as was said earlier, design the agenda and um, kind of participation guidelines for the day. Uh, we know, as uh, Carlisa described uh, and highlighted, some of the many accomplishments that you all have uh, made thus far, but also that you all requested this kind of this day, this dedicated day to really focus and come together around that broad vision and where you all want to go. We've engaged in several conversations before today with the commission staff and with the commission planning committee. We've taken a look at some of the meeting minutes and uh, other documents that you all had prior to today. And there are a variety of different uh, goals and objectives that people have for this, uh, for this retreat. And so we wanted to spend some time today uh, brainstorming some of the uh, topics that have been developed thus far and solicit other topics that you all may have and then give you all an opportunity to vote on them um, that will assist us as facilitators in designing the agenda for next week. Um, the, the time frame is nine to four. We know that you all are going to need a few breaks throughout there. There's lunch. And so what we want to do is really design the agenda so that we really can end the day with a few set accomplishments that you were looking for. Wow. Um, and so to do that, we want to get all of the ideas that you may have for that day and then use the voting to focus on those. We will continue to capture all of the ideas because you all as a commission may choose to pick up on some of the other ones on future dates, right? They're not, not important just because they don't end up on July 28th, but we also recognize that only so much can be um, accomplished on that day. So in a moment, I'm going to share my screen with again and go over some of the topics that have already been shared to us, give you all a moment to consider them and ask what is missing. Um, what would you like to add uh, if you were generating a topic for July 28th, what would that be and like to add to the list and then um, go through it again and give you all an opportunity um, to share your priorities as well using the chat function, okay? All right, so give me a moment to share my screen. Okay. And are you seeing the Word document? Oh, it's presenting now. Okay, 
So you should be seeing a Word document. As he said, this was developed just as a starting point from ideas that were already shared when the idea for the retreat was first initiated. When um, we met with the planning committee and in reviewing some of the notes already. So let me just go through uh, a few of these and um, and then give you all a chance to share. So these were some of the priorities or topics that people had indicated for the full day retreat. Understanding the legislation and its intended outcomes. Clarity of expectations of various groups, including commission members, work group members, commission staff, and other stakeholders. And this includes uh, decision-making processes. Establishing a common sense of purpose. Developing a common understanding of each other and our connection to this work. And we started a little bit of that with the gathering. Forming a clear direction for moving forward. Fostering open communication among the commission and work groups. Plan for achieving the commission's mandate. Identifying and obtaining necessary information, data, best practices. And creating common ground and respectful communication towards sustainable and full engagement of commission members, work group members, and stakeholders. As I said, this is not an exhaustive list, um, nor is it the full list of everything that's going to be covered um, next Thursday. Um, but in the interest of working with you all to contribute to your goals for the day, we would like to hear from you all. Uh, what is missing? What would you add? What things would you like to change or say um, differently? Okay, uh, I see that Georgia has raised her hand. Um, I, I'll uh, give her an opportunity to speak in a moment, but also to say that you all are welcome to raise your hands or put your thoughts or ideas in the um, chat as well. Yes, Georgia. So Toby, if I can um, use an opportunity to reflect that. So it sounds like you are uh, you feel that the list of items that you have here are a good starting place for us as a commission to talk about and discuss at the retreat. And so you're looking for feedback and additional ideas from us, is that correct? That is correct. So if there are things that people want to add, what our goal is, is to get as uh, broad a list as we can, and then uh, to give you all a chance today here in the meeting to give us your top three priorities, right? I'll, I'll give you another question to answer that, which is if you had to pick three of these for the focus of the meeting on July 28th, what three would they be? And so prior to doing that, we want to make sure that we have all of your ideas. We don't want to come in and say these are the only um, options for the focus for next week's meeting. Okay, so I'll give you all the chance to take a look at this. And um, what I'd like to do is just open it up for uh, people to share other thoughts or ideas that you have, changes that you would make to any of the language, um, what's missing, what would you like to add? All right, Claudia. Hi, this, is, this is Christina Bethel. Can you hear me? Yes, Christina, and then um, and then we'll go to Claudia because I know Christina, you're okay. on the phone a little harder. Yes. Yeah, no, I am so sorry. I no. am traveling today, but I really didn't want to. Make, I can only join by phone. Um, so you know, I love that list, and I want to really celebrate it. I also wondered whether we could have some kind of brainstorming session, even where we write things on a sticky pad and put them on the wall and organize them together or something along those lines of all the strengths and assets that already exist in the different areas that we're supposed to focus on, like creating a culture, a trauma-informed centered culture. What are the assets and strengths we want to build on? Programs, prevention, measurement, the different pieces. 
just so that we get them all represented according to everyone here. And it could be also, I think, important to just be in that mode of building on and celebrating all the amazing things that are happening. So it's just an idea of a possibility or finding some way to capture that through the meeting as well. Okay, so what I wrote uh, is brainstorm or list, clarify or clarify core principles. Oh, sorry, I wrote that in the wrong sentence. Uh, the strengths and assets that already exist within the areas where we need to focus. Is that an, an okay um, restatement mm -hmm. of what you said? Yeah, and if it can't fit in the main agenda, it could be something that everyone contributes anyway in a, like, through the chat or just some way where we can move that through um, intentionally and try to be as comprehensive as possible where people are really challenged to call up those in as detail a way so that they can be um, leveraged in all this work. Okay, so really the value is coming from that comprehensiveness to have uh, the, the information and really exploring um, some creative ways to get that, whether it's formally in the meeting or um, contributing it in some other way. Thank you. Yeah, got it. Claudia. So um, one of the things that I think is important, and I think it goes in either um, for with the common understanding of each other and our connection to this work, and it can also go in with what Christina shared, is um, really people's history with the work, because I think there are, there are some, um, Everybody has different pieces of the history of the work in Maryland. And I think, um, you know, it would be helpful to know who has what piece as an, because it's an asset, who has what piece of the history and an understand, getting an understanding of what that trajectory is. Um, I know the, it was mentioned the ACEs um, uh, executive order, and it's mentioned the the history of the, the commission and the commission legislation, and they grew up. They grew up separately, but but from some similar advocacy that was going on. And I think p different people had different pieces of that. And it's really helpful to know that history as we move forward to to create even more history together. So, thank you. All right. So, Claudia, kind of that common understanding and knowledge of the history both to inform where everyone is, but also where you want to go. Um, did I hear that correctly? Yes, thanks. Okay, thanks. and so I added our history to number four. Does that appropriately reflect what you were offering? Claudia left the meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, I'll try to reconnect, but um, it sounded to me that that was the case. So um, I added, um, I think, Fred, you had indicated clarify core principles and an implementation format for agencies. Um, so I added that. I don't know if you want to um, provide any additional uh, comments or, or information with regard to that, um, that offering. No, that's good. Thanks. Sure. And then Eileen, you added, um, good to know where the silos and gaps are in trauma-informed care. Anything you'd like to expand on or provide some context to that sure. statement? Yeah. So we run a nonprofit legal services firm, and we take trainings in trauma-informed lawyering and as staff, we want to understand how to work well with our clients who've experienced child abuse or domestic violence. But then you get into court and you're sitting in a court system where they have no idea about what's happening to the people in their courtroom or what's happened to them, how, how the court proceedings affect them, what does real safety for a child mean, on and on and on. And so that's why I mentioned earlier the SB 17, which was passed and signed by Governor Hogan, which has a trauma-informed basis for wanting, you know, 
to, to get more training for judges so that they bring an understanding to their courtrooms about what they're actually seeing. Um, sorry, I could go on and on about this, but I just wanted to mention that, that there are, there are areas, you know, in, in health, mental health, et cetera, where it seems very clear that trauma-informed care is absolutely required, necessary, et cetera. And then there are other areas, like in the legal system, where it's also necessary but is missing. And how how is that worked with and filled okay. and addressed? Great. And um, Eileen, it sounds like that kind of, at least in looking at it, naturally um, builds off of number 11, identifying those strengths and assets, and then also the silos and gaps, right? Are there ways that there may be assets that can fill uh, some of those gaps, um, the connection mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Eileen. Um, uh, okay. I was just looking at the chat if Wendy had, um, uh, contributed uh, an uh, an idea in addition to the the statement. Other thoughts or ideas with regard to uh, things to prioritize for the meeting on the twenty eighth, the all day meeting. Yes, Inga. Hi, this is Christina Bethel again. Um, this is probably also something that would just um, be filtered in as a charge to all participants to just leave with something that inspired them, something they learned and something they'd like to do right away, potentially as a way to engage um, actively throughout. Um, I think it would be fantastic if everyone left really with that clarity of their own. Um, and so just suggesting that. Okay, thank you. Um, and so I wrote that down. It might be kind of a, a nice, uh, a closing question for all of us. And Inga, you had a uh, your hand up, yes. Yeah, one of the things we discussed in our work group earlier this week is um, that we don't have a clear understanding of the purposes, goals, um, parameters, however you want to put it, of each work group, each subcommittee. So um, one of the things we were talking about is uh, creating subcommittee or work group charters so everybody knows exactly what the goals are, what the operations are, things like that. So um, that's something that we'd like to talk about. Uh, Inga, did I uh, accurately reflect what you just said? Yeah, thank you. Great. And I just want to highlight, I put example, right? Because I wanted to capture the idea or the solution or the option that Inga stated, but that part of the work on the 28th would be collectively coming up with what that is. So I didn't want to lose it, um, but I also don't want to assume that that's the, the solution. So I just want to be open with that. Um, Carrie. Uh, I think you just answered it actually with what you just said I was going to add on. So um, yeah, I just think it's important to come up with kind of what's next at the end and possibility depositing of a possibility of those chairs of the work group somehow being more connected. I know that, you know, that would be personally helpful to me. I think I've heard that from the, the other members as well is like, how do we all work together? So thank you. Okay, so I added that carry if that's okay to number 14 because it covers the work groups, but then also put that kind of goal that you stated with concluding the day with clear next steps. Does that uh, reflect what you suggested? Beautiful. Okay. All right. Other um, ideas or thoughts or additions or changes to what is currently listed? I'm going to make the font a little smaller, which I'm always hesitant to do, but to get as many of the ideas on a page as, he, as we can. Okay. 
I'd like to add, um, uh, as a community member, I'm not really sure how the government works <laughs> um, and how things uh, really uh, get get done or not get done or are communicated within those um, those perimeters. And so um, as a community member, I might communicate something a bit different. Um, and I you know don't understand the processes of what they go through in terms of um, understanding where they are and where they can go, uh, you know, in reference to the, um, in reference to the work groups, like, you know, we haven't, you know, I would love to have more communication with these offices so that we could understand more about how we can make uh, appropriate um, recommendations uh, because I, I would imagine that there would be different uh, differences in um, education and how they approach things and law enforcement and how they approach things. And so it'd be useful to me and I think others uh, to understand how that process works. Okay. And um, thank you, Ulysses. I tried to capture that as you were talking, but what I really heard from what you say is that what's important there is so that you as a community a community member and for the work groups to really be better informed so they really can better contribute to the overall mission and vision of the commission. So having that understanding will allow you to participate in a more meaningful way. Is that is that what I heard from you? Yeah, and, and being able to have an exchange, uh, not only with the work groups, but also with the agencies um, and, you know, having a point person that we could actually talk to you about um, how things work. Okay. So that open communication is important to you and how to facilitate that. Okay. Great. Other thoughts or ideas? Hi, this Christina Bissell, I just want to vote for what Ulysses just said. And so I haven't really seen the agency folks. I might have missed it, but I hope there will be to create a relationship that feels um, interactive, I think would be really important um, for all of us. <laughs> so I just want to emphasize his, contrib his contribution of an idea. Agree. Okay, so I uh, wrote establishing relationships among agencies, work groups, and community members. Does that um, accurately reflect what was suggested? I think I would. I would just suggest I think so, to, but with an emphasis on the agency's part, because to be really. All right, so for you, that uh, agency participation is, is key. Um, Jessica, you were, you were talking. Sorry, I was just going to add clarification so that we all know what we're talking about for 17. You might want to add state government agencies. I think that's what we're talking about. That's what I'm hearing. Just wanna, okay. If, if that's right. wrong, then someone please clarify. Okay. All right, I have a few hands up. I have Carrie and then um, Matila. I just wanted to somehow say, I think in the meetings that I've sat in as we're planning and visioning for this, and maybe as an add on to 17 and establishing relationships, really affirming and, and, and really coming from a basis of strength, because I think that we all, you know, have different intersections with different agencies and we can assume something is or isn't happening. But sometimes at the core, we forget that every single one of us is here because we have an intention to make it better. And so if we do establish a way to build those relationships, I would really just love to see it from that basis of strength, understanding and, and learning, knowing the history, but moving forward in it. I'll just deposit that. <laughs> All right, thank you, Carrie. And I think that pulls together several of the ideas which have been stated today and a little bit earlier on the 
um, what came with is kind of that that common sense of purpose. I think we heard from Claudia understanding kind of that history um, and really the value added that um, everyone really is bringing toward um, uh, this this common goal. Um, so thank you. And Matila, yes. I'm a bit concerned that the agenda is getting significantly long considering how much time we have to discuss these issues. I'm also concerned because from my understanding when the commission members along with other stakeholders discussed the opportunity of coming together for this retreat, it was around wanting to discover a common vision and common direction for the project. Judging from this list, it looks like there are other agenda items that folks want to discuss, which I'm not necessarily opposed to, but recognizing how challenging it was to get everyone together for this one session, I'm just wondering how, how realistic is this agenda considering the time frame we have. Sure, thank you, Matila. Um, and hearing from you, the one, the, a reconnecting a reminder of kind of the, the purpose and how this initially came about, really wanting to, recognizing the limited time that, that occurs and, and um, wanting to, to refocus on some of those initial um, ideas. And I will say that we as facilitators 100% agree with you. There is no way that we can get to all of these things um, on the 28th. And the group may not want to get to all of them uh, ever, right? I'm not going to presume what that might be. But I think it's a good opportunity to transition to the narrowing part of today's meeting to help give us as facilitators the guidance we need to develop the, the agenda for the for the 28th. And so what we would um, would ask, and so let, I'll pause, I see one of my co-facilitators, Carlisa has her hand up. So I'll, I'll pause for a moment before transitioning to that next um, step with the time we have left. Yes, mm -hmm. Carlisa. Thank you. I just wanted to add Toby uh, to what Toby said about this list not being the agenda, but that from this list of interest and uh, ideas that people have that they want to cover, that some of them will be part of the agenda and some of them may end up being part of your work over time. So what we wanted to emphasize is that while this list is of 17 items or however many on the page there, some will be selected for the retreat, and some of them you all will find ways to uh, accomplish either in your work groups or your main um, meetings over the month or in some other way. So we want you with this next step to feel comfortable that whatever it is we decide to do, we collectively decide to do on the 28th does not remove those other items from um, from view and from your your uh, tasks over time. Does that help also, Matia? To a certain extent, I think because I've been trained as an and as an inclusive mediator, I can I and I've participated in mediations. I'm aware of how um, how this process can end up being a continuous conversation that spans over the course of several sessions. So again, I just wanted to voice my concern yeah. that considering the limited time commission members have, not only for the retreat, but just for the work in general, considering that we are elected. Very I just good. wanted to make sure can that I, um, I expressed that concern. Very good. Thank can, I, can, I, can I add one thing just to this particular conversation? I am so sorry because I can't see the chat and I hate to interrupt. This is Christina Bethel again briefly, that some of the things that at least I added and maybe some others was to get to the clarity that we need to be able to have a conversation about a grounded vision. I mean, I think many of us could come up with our big vision of what will exist in the future and all that, but I feel an urgency to be applied it and that there, you know, if it turns out that we have some discussions to be able to put a vision together that really is applied and that really reflects our understanding about 
what we can do or can't do. I just want to note that some of these conversations might be all about being able to then actually create a vision that, that has application or action to it. Sharing that. Thanks. Um, and I, I want to recognize that, you know, different people need different things in order to get to different places, right? And so we're hearing that in part of this discussion is that some people may need kind of this, this understanding in order to move to the next step. Other people may need uh, particular data and information in order to move to, to a next step, whatever that may be. Um, and so what each of you kind of individually may, may need uh, is, is normal for that to, to be different and kind of hearing some of those different priorities. Um, I wanna be mindful of the time. Georgia, did you have something you wanted to add? No, I think that both Matilia and um, Christina uh, summarized it very well. And I'm glad to know that we have someone in our midst that really understands the fundamentals. But it's really about being transformative and hearing, because I think that when we were asked to facilitate this visioning session, you know, um, our idea was that the commission is an X spot if you think about positioning. But as we delved in and, and talked more, we thought this particular type of session was really important because um, as you know, perspective is everything, right? And hearing and listening to where people are and not making assumptions is important. So that goal that you mentioned is important. That's at the forefront of our mind as we go into the retreat, but also hearing from everyone else, what they value and think is important is also a part of the cocktail that we're trying to um, create. So I appreciate your perspective and your insights um, on this. Um, I know we only have a few more minutes, so I'll be quiet and let you get into the poll, and Toby. Okay, great. So um, what we're going to do now is, and I apologize, I have a fairly large screen. Um, so I, this is kind of big enough for me, but it is hard to tell how large this is on the screens that you all are looking at. Um, and so if I need to make this bigger or smaller, please um, let me know. I'm trying to get as many on one uh, screen as possible for you all to see. Because what I'd like you all to do is we need to hear from you as to what your top three um, priorities are, right? If you had to pick three of these for the group to focus on for the retreat on the 28th, what would they be? Okay, and so we, um, our request is that you pick the numbers. That's why they're numbered. They're in no list of priority at all. Um, and to pick which numbers represent the three things you would like to focus on for the meeting on the 28th, put those in the chat uh, to let us know um, this. Okay. If for some reason uh, or whatever reason that may be, this is not something you would like to put directly into the chat, you can email them to Aubrey. And I'd ask Aubrey if you could put your email address into the chat. Um, but if we were in person, we'd be doing this kind of in person. Everyone would see it. So we do. Um, we would really appreciate if you would, would put that um, into, into the chat. We'll give you all some time if you need me to put any of these in a different format, please let me know. Okay. Toby, I just wanted to point out to you um, that we'll save the chat after this meeting as well. So if you're not marking down numbers as you go, we can always have those on record and send those to you. Thank you. That was our, our plan. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate that. Also, as facilitators, just to let you all know, our goal is to kind of put uh, together that agenda for the day. And um, we're on a tight time frame, but we really are working to put that together and share that with you all in advance of the meeting so that um, you can also see those priorities for the day. Okay. 
evening after you've uh, provided your um, priorities. We just ask that you hang on just for a few more minutes while everybody else also does. And we have a few things that we would like to just say as we close out today's meeting. Christine, on the phone, did you want to share your um, options orally or you can always email them to Aubrey afterward? Yeah, I can't see them just the situation because it's a rare situation, but so I will um, have to send them after. <laughs> okay, we'll get them to you and, and you can send them Thank after. You. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, if you have not shared, please, um, please do so, so that we can help um, make the meeting on Thursday as valuable as possible. And I'm going to allow Georgia to, uh, to close us out. Thank you, Toby. Um, thank you, Carlisa, for um, really, number one, for meeting on vacation. <laughs> Um, spending a lot of your personal time talking with me and the staff and then also with the planning committee. Truly, truly appreciate um, the late hours and the conversations and the thoughtfulness that you all have placed into listening to what the what Christine and the rest of the group um, felt was important and thoughtfully putting that together. Thank you all, participants, volunteers, stakeholders, committee members, work group members, staff at the governor's office, Jessica, um, designees for taking time out of your busy day to day to spend with us going through this. And then of course, sharing. Um, the sharing is not over. Again, I mentioned to you that we have the pre-survey. We need you to complete that and get that in. Um, if at all possible today, we'd really appreciate that. We'll actually- I just put it in the chat. Okay, thank you. Check that link out, complete that. Um, that'll give us a chance and myself and my staff over the weekend to go through everything. Again, read the email from my staff. They're going to call each one of you and or email you. Um, please respond to them. If you would like to have a confidential conversation, this type of forum doesn't necessarily feel good for you or how you wanna share. We're happy, again, to have those confidential conversations. Um, those mediators will not be involved with um, the facilitation in this way. So of course, feel free to have conversations um, with them. And um, finally, um, if you have any questions in the meantime, of course, feel free to email me um, directly or um, you know, email Christine, she'll share my information um, with you. I think we have one person with a hand up. Who was that? I can't see the hands up right now. Who was that? No raised hands? I didn't see anybody, Georgia. Okay, okay. Um, let me just go ahead and put my email address in here right now, just in case anyone would like to reach out, A-A-C-R-C at I-N-F-O. Okay. And I just want to remind everyone that your responses to the survey are anonymous. There's, we don't ask your name or anything else. I don't have the ability to figure all of that out. So we um, really do appreciate and value that information um, as well as um, your participation here today and hearing about your priorities for next week. So thank you very much. 
Thank you all so, so very much. We appreciate you. Ms. Jones, I'll be giving you a call as a volunteer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Already volunteer. Always recruiting. Okay. Yeah, I already volunteer for the Baltimore City Community Mediation. But yeah. um, my brother, David Foster, used to work for the Anne Arundel County one. Yes, David absolutely mm -hmm. loved it. Awesome young man. Awesome young man. <laughs> yes, he is. Thank, thank you. you all also, so thank you for much. thank you for doing such an amazing job today. I just want to say it was wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> thank you all. Bye bye. All right, Christy. I don't know if you had any last parting words. It looks like everyone has is signing off anyhow. So, meeting is adjourned. <laughs> yeah, I was just sharing the dates and stuff if anybody wants to take note of when the next meeting is and stuff they're up there great i'll send it out in an email post meeting <laughs> yep sounds good meeting adjourned thanks everyone thanks <laughs>